Lately, I've been playing a lot of Wing Breakers, a new aerial combat racing game that just came out of Steam Early Access after eight long years. It's a lot of fun, and it kind of reminds me of a racing game version of Wild Pilot, the barely remembered biplane shoot 'em up from Jalico. Released 30 years ago, this is a high flying action game where the goal is to take to the skies and shoot down a bunch of airborne criminals. It has a lot of cool bosses, a fun mystery, and a great conclusion that you just have to see. So turn back now if you don't want to know what happens next, because today we're going to spoil the story and ending for the arcade game Wild Pilot. This is Game Over, the early years. You know, for a game called Wild Pilot, you don't get to do any actual piloting. Your job is to jump in the gunner's chair and shoot down America's 10 most wanted criminals, all of which are members of a vicious gang known as the Manglers. This is a motley crew of villains, all of which are trying to get away in various types of airplanes. It's our job to shoot them down and bring them to justice, working our way through the packing order until we finally have enough evidence to bust Morris Browning, the leader of the Manglers. All right, there's not much of a story here, so let's go through each of the most wanted villains and see if we can figure out what they're planning. Let's go ahead and start with Shotgun Jones, the lowest man in the criminal organization. He's described as being mean-faced and trigger-happy. Next up is the Heavy, Giant Lee, a 450-pound bodybuilder whose airplane barely makes it off of the tarmac. And then there's Mary Vixen, an assassin who sometimes goes by the name Scary Mary. Okay, so here's where things start to get interesting. After chasing Mary all over the city, we attempt to arrest Graham Remington, a white-haired doctor that the game describes as being a cracked quack and a part-time bomb maker. Ooh, the plot thickens. Our next target is a mobster known as Jack the Slasher, which would be a whole lot more intimidating if this were a knife fight and, you know, not an airplane battle. With a mobster, assassin, and bomb maker, what could possibly be next? In this case, it's Harold Trickster, an appropriately named racketeer and swindler. I mean, with a name like Trickster, was there really any other line of work available? It's hard to be an insurance salesman, or a bank teller, or even a politician when your last name is Trickster. I'm just saying. This leads to Gava Hornet, who is the man responsible for bringing both the drugs and the mugs. No, that's not a joke. The Japanese flyer says that he's a drugs and mugs merchant. And look, if you're going to have a guy who sells mugs on your team, then you might as well have a cat burglar and jewel thief, too. That role is taken by a man named Diamond Gordon, which I'm guessing is not his real name. Now comes the two big hitters in this organization. First is Major Goodman, who is a hardened army vet who brings his military expertise to his new job as a most wanted criminal. And that brings us to the Major's boss, the man controlling the manglers and calling the shots. That's right, I'm of course talking about Morris Browning. He's described as an underworld boss and an overlord. Right now, he's just a man flying through a heavily fortified secret base. With nowhere left to go, we shoot down the criminal kingpin, and this is what happens next.
Much like the rest of the game, this ending is short and sweet. We shoot down Morris Browning, blow up his base, and get the girl. I mean, come on, what more could you possibly want from a game that barely lasts 20 minutes? The more interesting question is what Morris and his manglers were planning. They had everything from an assassin to a jewel thief to a guy who sold drugs, so what was their plan? The game never really reveals their goal, so it's up to us to put the pieces together for ourselves. Personally, I think the plot was to hijack and rob the money plane. Look at it this way, they had the muscle, the drug dealer had connections, the major had all those airplanes, and they even had a guy ready to make a bomb and blow up all the evidence. Hell, they even had an assassin ready to take out all of the dead weight once they were done with their job so that Morris could have more of the money. Seriously, it was the perfect plan. Well, that is until we showed up. Take that, crime. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Game Over, the early years. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new episodes almost every week. In fact, we have a whole playlist with more than 170 of these episodes. You should go check it out. Now, here's the question I have for you. What was Morris Browning's evil plan? Given all the people involved in this crime, it's up to you to figure out what he was up to. Let me see those dastardly plans in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back tomorrow to see what the critics thought of the Q Classics. What exactly are the Q Classics, you may ask? Well, I'm talking about the humans and the immortal. Are these forgotten gems actually classics, or is that just marketing? Yeah, you'll see soon enough. In the meantime, do me a favor and click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.